In the weather today, mild weather across much of the country. The Pacific Storm Track, however, is wide open, and that will bring a major precipitation event to California later this weekend. First, however, let's check on the world weather extremes for today. The world's hot spot is Geraldton, Australia, on the west coast. They've endured a major heat wave across this part of Australia. It reached 116 at Carnivan back on Wednesday, and now Geraldton, just north of Perth, 116 degrees, and they are right there on the Indian Ocean. The world's cold spot, instead of Siberia, it's going to be Greenland, summit camp down to minus 67. And there's how it looks from the air, that ice cap two miles deep, giving a station elevation of somewhere around 10,500 feet. Here's what we have for the surface analysis. Pacific cold front moving through eastern New Mexico and far west Texas. We've still got a deep occlusion off of the Washington coast down to about 995 millibars and a stationary front from the Midwest into the Northern Plains. We do have quite a bit going on in the upper levels for one, an omega block across the central part of the country, trough on both coasts, active southern stream across the southern states and up there in Canada, and we're kind of in between enduring this blocking pattern. As we go into the weekend, you can see things remain stormy out there in California, Deep vortex across North Texas. A couple of lows right there. And we end up with this Rex block. A cutoff low south of a cutoff high. So you can definitely memorize that. That's a classic Rex block pattern. And as we go into Monday and Tuesday, it breaks down into this ridge. And we get back into a progressive pattern. And then as we go into later next week, a vague area of troughing through much of the country divided into these smaller scale waves. And you can see some ridging building off of the west coast, marking a bit of a progression to the long wave pattern. Sometimes it can help to compare two different frames, such as today and eight days from now on February 10th. So when we flip back and forth, you can kind of see the, the difference in the upper air patterns. Today, lots of troughing on the west coast. Eight days from now, ridging and a northward shift in that polar front jet. Today, ridging across the central US. And then eight days from now, replaced with this generalized troughing divided into smaller scale troughs and ridges. Overall, however, we do remain in a split flow pattern, and the Pacific storm track does remain active, although it shifts a little bit to the north. So what is the situation with the Arctic air? Well, this is a temperature map. The orange colors correspond to the most extreme Arctic air, down to minus 30, minus 40, and that is in place in Alaska. There's an old rule of thumb when we have Arctic air in the lower 48, it tends to be warm in Alaska. Well, today, it's the opposite. And there's what we have going on in Alaska, minus 6 at Anchorage. And in Fairbanks, we're down to minus 41. Further into the interior, minus 48 at Tanana, and then the North Slope, looking a little bit more mild. Well, here's the trend over the next week. Some of that cold air does dislodge and move into northern Alberta and parts of Northwest Territories and Nunavut. It's very slow to come down, so some modification takes place. As we go into Tuesday and Wednesday next week, still locked up in Canada, a lot of the cold air shifting into Hudson Bay, but it looks like finally by Friday next week, some of it starts slipping south into the Dakotas, but temperatures still in the teens and 20s. The uh, last frame, it's going to be this 
frame right here. It does look like we regenerate a large amount of bitterly cold air from Victoria Island down to southern Nunavut and up towards Banks Island. So this will bear watching, but at the moment don't really see anything pushing that south just yet. And those pressures up there are not all that impressive, 10, 20 millibars. So our focus will be on the Pacific, specifically this frontal system here well west of California. That's going to be approaching the west coast as we go into Saturday and Sunday, and you can see it taking aim on the central coast of California. The rain spreading in late Saturday and early Sunday, the snow's picking up in the Sierras, and then we're in a full-fledged atmospheric river event by Sunday. How bad is it going to be? Well, we can take ourselves a look at the UCSD integrated vapor transport and watch that atmospheric river approach the California coast. So really not much moisture until we get into late Saturday and early Sunday. And there it is flooding onto the coast. The nose of that moisture heading up into the Bay Area, Monterey, IVT is up near 1,000, which is fairly significant. Quite a bit of moisture coming into the San Joaquin Valley and pushing into the Los Angeles area by late Sunday. This has the potential to bring three to six inch rain amounts in the valleys and well above six inches in the mountains. The system breaks up into this cold core low in the northern part of the state as we go into early Monday, and then the warm advection, warm conveyor belt area, shifts into the deserts as we go into the work week. And in terms of precipitable water, this is how it all plays out. Going into tonight and into tomorrow, there's a nose of one to one and a quarter inch precipitable water heading into the central California coast. That's bound up with that axis of high IVT values. And you can see that shift down the coast into the LA San Diego area for late Sunday. And then into the deserts, bringing in about maybe three quarters of an inch of precipitable water into Phoenix and Tucson for early Tuesday. So a little bit of a slow progression eastward early next week. And of course, the other story is this Pacific system moving into New Mexico and Texas, starting to link up with some deep tropical moisture from the Gulf of Mexico. As a result, we're getting convection around Lubbock down to Sweetwater and San Angelo. On the last frame, you can see it right there. Lots of storm tops. Let's take a closer look at that. I don't think we've seen this kind of weather in a while, but uh, yeah, you can see the flow of moisture right there reflected in the stratus and stratocumulus field surging north and some of it making its way westward where we have the cumulonimbus elements developing as heating takes hold. And it's got the look of a uncapped air mass. Lots of cells going up. It's hard to believe some parts of the U.S. are below minus 40. Meanwhile, in Texas, it is basically April. The dew points across Texas, 60s and upper 50s. Looks like it's been eroded a little bit by mixing as we get that heating working across the Abilene, San Angelo area. The front has pushed out into the Midland, Lubbock area. And as far as a dry line, well, we may very well have that some evidence of maybe a dry line right in there, perhaps responsible for some of that activity right there north of Sweetwater. This here appears to be forced along the frontal boundary. A quick look at the radar out of Lubbock does show multi-cell clusters all the way down the Cap Rock and into the region just west of San Angelo. A few cells like this one near Crosbyton does have the look of a low top supercell some very high reflectivity in that. The velocity, however, not showing a whole lot of rotation. And then we take a look at the HRW model from SPC. It appears the guidance is outrunning the current locations of those storms. The high resolution rapid refresh does look a little bit closer to reality. So that's pretty close to what we're seeing on the radar and the general trend over the next several hours bringing that to the Interstate 35 corridor about midnight, and then forming up into an MCS 
in the wee hours of tonight, and then heading into East Texas and the Texas Coastal Plain, and then early tomorrow morning on into Louisiana. So let's go ahead and take a look at that forecast going into tonight. You can see lots of snow showers across the Four Corners area up into the Wasatch Range. We've got winter storm warnings through Sunday, mostly above 8,000 feet, across much of southwestern Colorado and northern New Mexico. For the rest of the region, south from Albuquerque into Midland and the Trans-Pecos, we've got a variety of wind warnings all the way down there. Could see 55 to 60 mile an hour gusts back behind this cold front. Then we start looking at the next weather system coming in from the west. Meanwhile, in Texas, strong, moist, and warm advection helping to feed this cluster of rain through tonight and into early tomorrow. Going into midday and on into the afternoon tomorrow, the rain continues shifting to the east into Arkansas, Mississippi, and Alabama. Dry advection, dry slot into Texas, and there's that weather system coming onto the California coast. And of course, a flood watch posted for much of Southern California, west and southwest of Los Angeles, down to San Diego. Heading into Sunday, that's what it looks like later during the evening. Rain all the way from Savannah to Atlanta, back over to Memphis and Tupelo. Meanwhile, California just mired in that atmospheric river event. The strong southerly flow pumping up that moisture all the way up to the Sierras and into the northern San Joaquin Valley. Yeah, and winds. Winds are going to be a big factor. This is a plot showing the wind speed, not the gusts, but the sustained wind speed in knots. So going into tonight, it's going to be quite windy through the Alpasa area down to Chihuahua. Then during the overnight hours, we focus in on New Mexico. And then as we get the heating, the development of that dry slot, some mixing and momentum down to the surface, quite a windstorm developing all the way down towards Fort Stockton. And then as we go into the overnight hours tomorrow night, that'll spread into the Edwards Plateau. Meanwhile, on the West Coast, this next system bringing in a strong pressure gradient. Then by early Sunday, we're picking up sustained winds over 50 miles an hour from the Bay Area down to Vandenberg. And that'll spread inland during the day on Sunday. So most of that high wind, that's going to be affecting Sacramento, Stockton, and then maybe some lesser wind speeds down to the south. It still will be windy, but not quite as big as the problems they have up north on Sunday. So we go back to the other weather chart right there. We see the occlusion breaking up early on Monday. Meanwhile, the main bear clinic system starting its trek across the southern Rockies. And it behaves very much like an anafront. There's a lot of that precip back behind it in the Four Corners area Tuesday night. It starts pumping up the moisture into Texas on Wednesday. So a return of rain to that part of the country. And you can see there's not really a whole lot of cold air coming south. Pressure's up north, 10, 16 millibars in Manitoba. That's not very much. Another Pacific weather system, a little bit further north, around southwest Oregon, Eureka, Arcata, and Fort Bragg. And there's how we look going into late week. A big Midwest occlusion tail end of the system on the east coast and not much going on down to the south but there is bare clinicity in place we can see that by the thickness values so we really just need a good trough to pick that up and create frontogenesis and we get to the end of the sequence and that is going to be it we'll take a look at the rest of that for next week and that will do it for this edition of forecast lab I do want to thank our newest Patreon supporters, Barry Martin and SoCal Geo. Thank you very much for helping to support this program. Okay, hope you all have a great weekend. Take care and we will see you back here on Monday for the supporters. So if you want to see that Monday show, head over to Patreon. And for everybody else, we'll see you back here on Wednesday. Have a great weekend and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.